Okay. I'll try. Hey everyone, um, welcome to WWE Fan 1993, uh, the state of the WWE. I'm Ant. I'm Ellen. And we are going to you live, um, talking about the current state of WWE. Ellen, how are things? How are you thinking WWE is going? You know what? I'm kind of 50 50 on it because uh, some things are going great, some things aren't working, and it's kind of just always been that way in wrestling, to be honest. So, yes, some things are good, some things are things that we wish we could forget, but unfortunately, we need to talk about that. <laughs> all of them, Mantar. All of them. So, um, (laughs) Bastion Booger. So, we're going to start off talking about NXT because it's one thing that we're very passionate about and we didn't get a chance to really talk about it last time. So, we're going to open up talking about that so we get a chance to go in deep. So, last last week's NXT opened up with a memorial for Shad Gaspard who passed away. He was 39 um, I remember hearing about it, like, on Facebook. Everyone was like, oh, my God, he's gone missing. And I was like, uh-oh, I think, you know, I hope he's okay. And I wasn't sure if it was, like, I knew it was serious, but I didn't know it was, I thought they would find him, but um, he passed away. So, rest in peace, Chad. I remember Crime Time specifically when Lita retired, and they basically yeah. <laughs> took her underwear and, like, sold it. <laughs> and, like, oh, yeah. my gosh, yes. That's, I just, they were, like, I loved Crime Time. I'm not even joking. Like, they were probably, at one point, they were, like, my favorite thing ever. Like, genuinely. Yeah. that They were they were funny. They are kind of like the street prophets, but, like, yeah. um, different. When, when I was younger, because, like, you know, Crime Time and, like, they were just, the cool, like, again, so cool to me. And it was like, yeah, they're these rebels. They... <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah it was just really upsetting to hear the news to be honest yeah crime time was the best i hear you i um i remember like being so little and like yeah let's steal <laughs> you know Literally, like they make crime look cool <laughs> exactly crime time so um yeah. i yeah i felt bad to be honest though like i wasn't as like like i was surprised but I just said to myself, once they called off the um, the search for him, I kind of had a feeling like it was not going to be looking good for him. But yeah, rest in peace, and uh, I hope his family is doing good. And this is such a terrible time too for like health problems to be going on. Like, yeah, it's very scary. But he didn't die due to any COVID relation. Um, I don't know the actual cause of death. I know that might have been accidental drowning. I I don't know, so don't quote. I think that's what it was because, yeah, they couldn't find his, um, I think a wave came in or something and they just couldn't find his body after that until they did, obviously. Crazy. Well, but yeah. wow, rest in peace. And um, I forgot to mention this in the beginning, this NXT recap that we're talking about is from the NXT show from May 20th, so it was last week. So yes. we open up in the Performance Center, everyone welcomes us. Uh, Mauro Ronello is with Beth Phoenix. And the first match is Karrion Cross with Scarlett against Liam Gray. So, yes. I have a little um, spiel to go about Karrion Cross. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I really like him. <laughs> I do. And I really like Scarlett. But I have to say, the beginning when they're in the ring and she runs around, twirls, and is ah! Like, like, she needs to stop that. Like, I don't... <laughs> Like if she would. I think it's cool. It's like the spectacle of it. I don't know. I just think like okay, it's fine if she like walks around, but like when she's running across the ring and she has her arms up in the air and she's twirling, I don't understand how that's demonic. Um, I I mean it's reminding me of like the Salem witch trials in the 1600s. If that's what she's trying oh, to do. Nice. But I. I yeah, it's her artistic imagery. I don't know what she's trying to do. Yeah, I mean, maybe she's when she's doing that, she's conjuring up the visions of the demons in her head, so maybe we're just Perhaps. not seeing it. Yes. But I do think she's obviously a bombshell, and it is a very good character. But, like, I'm not going to lie. I have gone around my house running back and forth doing the body shake. I've totally done it, and I think I can master it as good as she has. But 
No, I think for me... No, go ahead. Her replacement, oh my God. <laughs> they take us off the air. Um, but the thing is, <laughs> it would be pretty bad. The thing is that, like, I really do like her, and I really like him, and I'm really interested. I just think, for me, less is more when it comes to these dark-type characters. Um, I get that. Unless she was doing some kind of, like, demon-worshipping weird-type thing, I just, I don't understand how anybody's going to see her run into the ring and do that and be threatened. I mean, the music, yeah. But, I mean, if I see her running around the ring, I'll be like, listen, patrol your girl, get her on a leash, calm her down. <laughs> But, I mean, I wouldn't approach her while she was doing that. Uh, I'd be scared for my life, like in a tornado. Gosh, <laughs> man, you don't even. My other question is: I wonder how she can see. It's so dark in there. There's nothing yeah. red. How does she not fall on her ass? I don't get it. Like, like. But you know what? Be careful. Listen, she's got the moves like Jagger, so go for it. So <laughs> she comes out there. She does her dance. She didn't sing the whole song this week. She did her dance though. Um, yes. Cross defeated a guy named Liam Gray um, with a cross jacket submission. It was easy. Um, Scarlet came in. They were they were chanting it all. Saying here, do 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 do, and then yes. Champa comes out, and you're like, oh crap. Um, he basically welcomes Cross to NXT. He says that um, you know your honors is special. Char Scarlet, this is kind of cool. He opened the rope. For him, she opened her for him. Yeah, I thought that was a cool image. Yeah, she was just like, come on in. And he went in. Um, yeah. He said he came out and wanted to let everyone know that he's fighting him at TakeOver in your house on June 7th. Mm -hmm. He welcomes Karrion Cross to the main event, and then he throws the mic, and they stare at each other, and they walk out. What did you think yeah. of that segment? I mean, I f it, it looked great, and it, I mean, the match is building up really well, and I feel like with these two competitors, um, to men, the story kind of builds itself, and it's like, you know it's going to be really cool. Yeah, yeah. I have not seen someone come into WWE um, with that much sort of, like, mystique since Bray yeah. Wyatt, in my opinion. Not The Fiend. Well, The Fiend, yes. But Bray Wyatt, I remember when they first did the first um, promo for him. The and, yes. Yes, the and the buzzer, ends. and yeah, and I was like, wow. Yes. And this is kind of doing it for me, too. I'm not going to lie. I really like yeah, this. Yeah, I agree with you. I like it. So I think it's going to be good. Um, next was the interim. No, NXT. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. They, it's going to be great. It's going to be really good. I think that the match will be really good, and I think that we'll see a different side of both of them because we've never seen them fight each other, so it'll be interesting to see for the first time. Right. Yeah. So the next one was the interim NXT Cruiserweight Championship matches. You might need to help me with this because I'm not going to lie. I have not watched them. I fast forward. I don't really care. I'm not going to lie. Um, right. I care about the championship. But whenever it comes to tournaments, like I just mean, figure out who wins. Yeah. And the first match was El Hijo del Fantasma yeah. against Akira Tozawa. What did uh, you think? same I didn't like obviously it was a good match and I've been watching for it but I haven't been paying that much no attention, attention yeah. but I am really excited for the triple threat between the finalists I'm oh so that's gonna that. happen so there's a triple and now when does that happen is that gonna be uh, uh I think it's either next week or right oh. I think it's next week though okay so, basically, these matches don't really matter. It's just leading up to the triple threat match then. Okay. So, Phantasma yeah. wins this match with a Phantom Driver. Um, mm -hmm. We saw last week when Imperium defeated Matt Riddle and Timothy Thatcher. <sighs> yes. Terrible. Okay. It broke your heart. Um, it broke me. It, to it totally teared you up. Um, That's my boy. Thatcher was talking backstage. He says he left Matt Riddle's circus last week. Um, he says, "Oh, he so he's a hot mess. It was tragic." Oh, he called him a hot mess. My God, yeah. poor Adam, poor um, Matt Riddle. I'm about to call him Adam Cole. I don't know where I am today. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if I am in the clouds or if I'm home. I don't know where I am today. 
Nice, nice. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so. They're gonna be fighting exactly. next week, right? Is it gonna be like a. Um, steel cage match with. But you can only um, either uh, tap, them, tap them out, make them submit, or like knock them out. Oh, okay, okay. So that's gonna be good. Here's but, my question. I am so mad that if they are sending him to SmackDown that they're ending this feud so quickly. Why start? This is kind of interesting to me. Yeah. And, but then you're going to just get rid of it. I don't understand. No, I think I know what they're doing here, even though I don't like it. I think they're going to obviously have um, Riddle lose to Fasha in the steel cage, and then he's going to head off to SmackDown. Oh. But that's what I think they're doing. But that's the thing. Pete Dunne's not going to get back by the time he's going to SmackDown, and, like, they won't get to wrap their whole bros weight thing up. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, like, and that's a real bummer for people yeah. like me, because I've been invested in them this whole time. Yeah. It's just like, ugh. Well, and it's like and what's going to end up... comes along and ruins it all. Exactly. What's going to end up happening is they're going to end up on the main roster, and there's going to be no mention of them as a tag team. It's going to be like they never existed as a tag team before. Never happened. They never tagged. What yeah. do you mean? Ridiculous. And I gotta say, like, to be honest with you, this kind of also makes me think less of Timothy Thatcher, too, because the only reason why we know him is because of Matt Riddle right now. I mean, at least me, because, like, he brought him up and they're teaming together, and now that Riddle's gone, what are they gonna do for him? Is he gonna be a single star, and he's gonna just be, like... I think... Okay, so here's my thing. Um, in the indies, obviously you probably won't know this because nope. you're not a huge indies guy. No. Nope. But um, Timothy Thatcher used to be in Walter's stable, which was Ring Camp, but is now Imperium, obviously. Okay. So he used to team with Marcel Bartel, um, which is like, hmm, are they going to help him out in the cage match? Who knows? Oh. But like, so that's so the whole time, ever since Timothy, um, ever since Thatcher debuted, I was like, he's going to turn on Riddle and he's going to he's going to join Imperium. He's going to be with Walter again. I, and I've just been like terrified this whole time. <laughs> but then it just happened that I thought he was going to. But uh, sorry, I'm rambling. No, no, go ahead. He is a good. He's a great single star as well. Like um, he's been a great single star in um, like Evolve and. Uh, He's, he's definitely a good single star. It could work either way for him. And I feel like he's going to do really well with NXT. NXT is definitely a good place for him to be. Good. I'm excited because we need some new blood. And I'm glad that you gave me a little inside scoop on the indies. I would love. But see, here's what needs to happen. The only way, I, I agree with you. I think um, Imperium, it would be sick if they got involved. I think they would yeah. have to have it be a common enemy. Here's what I don't get. Right. What happened with Finn Balor and Imperium? They were going um, at it, and then it just stopped. So, I think, um, mostly Finn Balor, because we were meant to have TakeOver Dublin, um, so I thought Finn Balor was going to win it there, but he said that, um, Basically, until NXT UK is back, his whole feud, his whole feud with Walter is basically just paused for now. So now that's what I was until NXT getting UK at. Gets back. They've been NXT yeah. UK has not been recording anything. No. Okay, so they've been done. So Walter, he hasn't been doing anything. Um, no, not that I know of. Okay, okay, so that okay, because I thought they were still going on. So that's good to know. So that maybe when he comes back, because what I was thinking was maybe it would be a good turn if Thatcher was fighting Balor in a cage match, and then right, do 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 do, do and then they just, yes, yeah, but oh, um, iconic. Yeah. But right now in in NXT UK, Ilya Dragunov is the number one contender for that title. So I think Walter's just gonna get him out of the way, and then Balor versus Walter. Yeah, that would be, be good. A thing. I have so much newfound respect for Walter. Um, oh my god, Walter is... Yes, go on. They just... I think I told this last week, I'll say it again. Walter against Ty, Pete Dunne. Like, mm. I was surprised and it took me a... Like, I, I haven't really been surprised in wrestling matches. 
that was freaking phenomenal. I don't yeah. normally say that. That yeah, was I really know. good. Literally. And like, it's... Cause there, again, go ahead. I watched Warthog Indies for years. It, it, it was like, I know he's a monster. I know, like, I've seen Walter at his best, and it's it's a whole other thing. Like, I love Walter. He's just... He's one of the best things about wrestling. Like, his kind of character is one of the best things about yeah. professional wrestling yeah. and sports entertainment, and it's just... I love Walter. Well, because it's, like, it's real, day. too, with Walter, because it's like you see him, and he looks domineering. You don't want to fuck with him. He he just is quiet, and he's just yeah. a good character. And when you have him with the... It, it, you look at him, and you almost think, like, I'm not even going to lie, like, I see him, and I think war. Like, I see him in Imperium, and I think, like, they're coming yeah. to, like, kick our asses. Like, you got me. You know, like, it's that sort yeah. of, like... You get this feeling of like, yeah, but I really, I love them. They're, I love Marcel I mean, Bartel, Eichner, like they all. Yeah, um, I I agree completely. And it looks like um, Lorcan and Bert are going to be their next challengers. They did that kind of mocking thing after their match with um, last week, I think. Oh wait, so you think uh, Lorcan and Danny Birch are going to be? Yeah, there? because. Um, they had a match last week, and after after it, they did the putting their hands behind oh the back thing, God. like Imperium does. And I was like, oh, they're next. And See, I love Lorcan and Birch, so I'm excited for that. Oh, so you that. like them? See, I don't really like them too much. They don't really like... Why? Because here's the thing. For me, you need to stand out. If you are, yeah. you need to... Okay. They just remind me, and, like, they're good, and maybe it's because, like, Granted, it's not their fault because they get told, do this move, do that move. Like, they're, they get, you know, told what to do in the matches. So, it's not really their fault. But I just feel like there's no juice to them. It's like, yeah, they're good fighters, but who cares? You know, like, we have a bunch of fighters. We I want a character from them. And every time it's like they fight, they lose. And then they come back, oh. And it's just, yeah. you know, it's just like, how many times are you going to get re like, They you, went over a while ago, and it was like... <laughs> you're like yes finally <laughs> no and i'm sure like i'm sure eventually like literally go ahead um like literally because they were so over age there was a point i don't remember when but i thought they were gonna win the um championships against uh the ue yeah but like it just never happened and now i'm excited because the you know, they pro they might not, but they also might, which makes me happy, because, like, um, because, um, uh, Danny Birch is a London boy, like, like, he's from, um, he's from the same city as me, so it's like, yes, Danny Birch. Oh, wait yeah. a minute, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, so, so, I get rid like, when someone's from, from where you're from, it's like, oh, of yes, course. like, for me. Okay, it's so. Like, I I'm just like, yay, Danny Birch. I will root for Danny Birch now for you because he's from your town. I get it. Do it for me, man. I will do it for you. I will sit and watch his bald head fall off a ladder yes. or something. No, but okay, cool. Well, he's not terrible. I just I'm waiting for like I think it would be I think it would be better if they were bad guys, in my opinion. They just have like a more like Right now, it's just like, oh, yeah, we fight for everyone's rights. We're like, like, it's just kind of like they're still, like, what are you fighting for? You're just fighting because you're a good person? Like, okay, but, like, I want more. Wait, sorry, you're, like, really cutting out for me. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm saying, like, for them, like, I, I like that. I think they're good wrestlers, but for me, like, I want to know what they're fighting for. I feel like NXT has them to be very vanilla. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that, like, we could have a lot of people fighting, but, like, why are you mad? Like, I think they'd be better as villains than a good guy. I just think they have that sort of just, like, I don't know. But we went off on a tangent. But still, good Emporium. Yeah. Emporium. Oh, my God. Emporium. <laughs> oh, my God. Where am I today? <laughs> Again. Nine, bro. I, listen, I must be. Imperium and... Um, Matt Riddle, we were talking about Timothy Thatcher, then we got on to oh Lorcan and Birch. Yeah, we were just on a hole. That's okay. That's cool. I like all of them. So I'm excited this to see what we this Yes. Is why we, we try. Oh, so, man. so that that was good. And then we see Shot 
Shotzi Blackheart does a promo. Again, she doesn't really do it for me, I'm not going to lie. Um, don't I know much about that her. That promo was, like, so cool. Yeah, her writing on the... <laughs> On the um tank or no? What yeah, is it? Like she, d as as a wrestler, she doesn't really do it for me. But like that promo was really cool. I just think it was like the end when she goes, "You can eat my tank." What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> like I say, I, okay, no and then slowly walk away. <laughs> like I'm like, all right. Um, <laughs> she doesn't really do it for yeah, me. I get that. She's not bad, but it's just kind of. Yeah, and so then our next match was yeah. Mia Yim. She defeated Santana Garrett. That was good. Yes. I like Mia Yim. I'm the I'm the I'm the B I C. You know yes, me. Yes, I I Mia Yim's great. I love her. Mm -hmm. And then Johnny Gargano came out and made Cancel Ray make fun of her. And then Keith Lee mm -hmm. comes out and checks on Mia Yim after Cancel Ray attacked her. Um, yeah. I think they're either setting up for. Um, Keith Lee against Gargano at um, In Your House, or they might do a mixed tag, which I probably think will probably be on NXT rather than In Your House, but I would like to see a mixed tag, but what do you think about Gargano yeah. and Lee, I'm not Lee, Gargano and Ray and their new gimmicks? I mean, like, with um, Gargano and Lee, give me that match, yes, inject that into my veins. Oh my god, yeah. Like, that's amazing. Like, Genuinely, Keith Lee, like, Keith Lee could marry me, like, genuinely, I love that man, he's amazing. He, um, yeah, he is, like, one of my favorite, he's like Midas, literally, whenever he fights with someone, he turns into gold. He's very, like, I have not seen him literally. fight, Dominic Dijakovic I thought was boring as all well, hell, I and mean, then him and Keith Lee fought all those times, and I was like, damn, like, they brought it, he's good, mm. he's very good, Keith Lee's, like, one of my favorites. So Yeah, like. Genuinely, Keith Lee, love him. Um, Keith Lee versus Gargano would genuinely just inject that into my veins. That's <laughs> all I can say. Yeah, I agree with you. I What's funny is, like, I'm a big Johnny Gargano fan myself, and my fiancé got me a hoodie of his, but this was right before he turned <laughs> bad, so it was just like, oh, now I have to get another one. So I was like, but uh -oh. still, no, I like him. I like his character. Yeah. Um, I like how he is just changing his ideas and saying, like, you know, I've been for NXT for a long time. I've never really been appreciated. Da, 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 da. I like this character. And I like Candice yeah. LeRae, too, as a bad guy. So that yeah. was good. Um, we look back. I like Go ahead. Candice's reason. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because she's like, who per you're right, who yeah, protected like the me. Whole thing about, like, yeah, like, she's been, like, it's the thing you hate the most about heels. Like, they're usually right. Yes. And it's just, like, she's right. She, she's been amazing and hasn't been given that much opportunity. So it's, like, she should definitely yeah. have that opportunity. Yeah. And when she said, too, like, they yeah. showed that the, of, like, her helping everyone out when they were getting attacked. And I do agree with her because here's what I wonder though. And this is what I love about NXT. Yeah. You always wonder if they knew that this is where they were going. Like, because they started yeah. like Candice LeRae helping people back like last year. And yeah, so I wonder literally. if they were saying like, okay, we're going to keep her having her protect people, not give her a lot of shots and see where it goes. Or if... Mm. Because, like, this is good storytelling because you're right. It makes sense. She really wasn't never really – how many title shots yeah. has she been given? Like, none. Maybe one. Um, Literally. So I, I agree with you. That is a good point that it does make sense for her to be the way she mm. is. Totally. Yeah. Then we saw hey. Damian Priest attack Finn Balor last week. Um, eh, yes. Cameron Grimes. I don't really care about him. He was talking. Yeah, Cameron Grimes, I don't really. Yeah. But Damien Priest, please, yes. I I love Damien Priest as well, like, genuinely. I think he's really good, too. Like, I think he's he's got that mm. height advantage. He's very athletic. The moonsaults. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, he's very massive. good. He's massive. Like, genuinely, he's really massive. Mm -hmm. So, he's very good. So, I can't, I'm excited to see... Um, what they do with him and Balor. But to be honest with you, I'm not going to lie. 
Balor hasn't been doing it for me lately. He has not been... Um, uh, yeah, I get that. It's just been high. Like, he, he's just been stale lately since, like... I'm not gonna lie. Balor has been stale since, like, 2017. It's been pretty bad. Oh, um... <laughs> I... Oh, I don't even know what to say to that. Um, I like... He puts people over, which is obviously a good thing, but I kind of agree... It, it Like... I feel like the last time Finn Balor was cool was like twenty seventeen, like yeah. twenty sixteen. Yeah. Like I think, I think sometimes wrestlers just peak, and it's like, yeah. It, right. I don't think I don't think it gets better than twenty sixteen Balor. Sorry. Well, that's what makes me sad though, too, because I bet it could, and it just bothers me because like these people writing the storylines, like I feel like they are just morons. Like, they literally just hire people who have a creative writing background. I'm sorry. If I'm a wrestling promoter, and granted, I know because it's not about wrestling anymore, but if my company was about wrestling, I would hire people who know what this is all about. I want people who watched it from the beginning. I want people who maybe have not watched it from the beginning but just started watching it. We need a lot of different ideas, but I just feel like these people are just morons. You have a guy like Finn Balor who... Anytime yeah. he puts on that face, everyone goes crazy. How come you only do it like three times? I don't get yeah. it. You have all of these things at, like, for example, I was watching Brody Lee against John Moxley at AEW. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, I can't wait to see Brody Lee fight Ricochet or Brody Lee fight. But I'm like, wait, they did it before and it was crappy. Yeah. And it just goes to show you that yeah. if there's another company who is really making your wrestlers look better than they did when they were with you, that's your fault. And it's a yeah. shame because Definitely. these wrestlers are really good. And we are in an era where we got some really great wrestlers, but it's just all about sports entertainment. Let's have Viking Raiders and Street Profits play golf. Like, come on. Like, I don't no, no one wants to see that. In old... In, like, indie promotions a few, like, years ago, Bella used to make his entrances, like, he did one time he was, like, had um, Joker makeup on, and it was, like, every, it's the kind of thing you have to cheer for, it was, it was amazing, mm -hmm. and one time he came in, like, he made his entrance in, like, a stray jacket, and those were just so cool, I don't understand why they can't do that sort of thing with him, because, like, Finn Balor's, like, entrances, like, sometimes the stuff he wears, it's just the spectacle of it. it yeah. It's, it's enticing and it makes you care. Yeah. Who cares about Finn but, like, Balor right now, they you know? Do, they don't do it right. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, even Asuka, yeah. like, I was looking at, like, when she was in Japan and her makeup, like, she was yeah. scary looking. Like, she looked creepy, man. And I just don't yeah. understand what they're holding back for. We could mm. handle it. I think as fans, like, we like that. Asuka's a joke now. Yeah. Her, too. Nia Jax. Mm. She's a joke. Like, all these people that could have been something are jokes because they made them lose consistently. How the hell you mean to tell yeah. me Asuka is going to lose clean to Carmella? That does not happen. Yeah. In Jesus. the real world, that does not happen. Mm. So I just, I'm sorry. I, I, it's making me upset. But I, once again, the tangent, I'm sorry. Um, but we were talking about Damian Priest no and Finn Balor, and yeah, it's going to be a good match when they do fight. It's going to be really good. Yeah. Um, I, go ahead. I love Damian Priest. I love him in the Indies, so I'm definitely happy to see all this. He's really good. Him. Next, we yeah. saw Undisputed Era come out. Um, Roderick Strong's taking on Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis is okay. He's not bothering me. Mm -hmm. He's doing it for me. He's all right. I like mm -hmm. him. His character yeah, is kind of cool. I, yeah, I really like him, but like, I don't think they should have had him lose to Roderick Strong just yet. Oh, he did. I just see that's right. He did lose. I was just reading that he lost. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't think that should have happened. I think they should have given him a few more weeks at least, or at least to win your house or the next takeover or whatever. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. I think, you know, for him to be brand new, basically, it shouldn't be having him lose. I agree mm. with you. Um, like, but, and you have him every week just, like, 
dominating his opponents and like making them tap and everything and it's just like you have him lose so easily to Roderick Strong it's just like come on man what What I think what I think needs to happen more with wrestling is stop having the wrestlers fight each other before the pay-per-view matches don't put Roger right. Strong against Dexter Loomis, where one of them has to lose, and then you go on to a pay per view not feeling any. Don't if you have them fight, don't do like you did with Io Shirai and um, Rhea Ripley. Cause a DQ. Have yeah. it make it progress. Don't have him lose. Okay, and now he's mad that he lost. And he puts him in his sleeper hold, and now he's gonna fight him again. Like that's stupid. Make him be yeah, dominant. Okay. Don't have them touch each other at all. Don't have them be mm-hmm. near each other. Have them look at each other, but don't touch at all. And then in your house, mm-hmm. that's what builds it up because you've never seen them fight each other. So you're like, what yeah. will happen? But now we know. Here's what will happen. Roderick Strong will find a way to counter and roll him up and get a pin. No one, you know, mm-hmm. no one wants to see that now. Yeah, I get that. Um, so Strong wins, and then Loomis puts him in the Katagatomy submission. Um, Adam Cole and Bobby Fish run down and try to see him, but then Velveteen run, runs down. He attacks Dream and Cole, and he helps Loomis fend off Undisputed Era, which yes, that was cool. Um, after, I think they make like a cool team. Um, Dream and Loomis, yeah, because they're both different. They're both strange in their own way. Yeah. Unique. <laughs> Unique is the word. Unique. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I do agree. That would be a strange, odd couple tag team. Mm. Loomis de- Dream. I feel like it would definitely work. Yeah. Loomis Dream. Dream Loomis. Dream Loomis. I like that. Dexter mm. Dream. Okay, so after that, we see Ihio Del Fantasma and Akira Tozawa. They're talking, and then an SUV mm. pulls up, and they beat up Tozawa, Um and but they basically Phantasma gets out of the car and they run away. I wonder where they're going with this. They've been doing this now for about three months. I don't know uh-huh. what's happening. What do you think is happening? I think that Phantasma is actually the mastermind behind all this because, like, Phantasma's too baby face for a baby face. Like, you get what I mean? Like, he's got to be like the evil mastermind behind everything. Like, he's just putting on this baby face act. Oh, so you think it's an actual, um, well, you're right, because Phantasma never gets, does he ever get brought into the truck, or does he get attacked? No, he got, he got attacked once, but he fought them off, which I think was fake fighting them off, to make Uh, him look like, oh no, I'm not a part of this, guys, I was attacked too. Okay, that would be good, look at you with your own ideas, Mm -hmm. alright, okay, we're about to hire you for WWE. They should. They honestly should. Like, I'm amazing. <laughs> yes. Um, speaking of Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch, quickly, randomly, um, who is Ever-Rise? I know they're new, but I don't... Ever-Rise is, right now, a jobber team. I just, I don't, I don't even know, like, their names. I think one of them might be Grey or something. I don't know. Wait, I think I have it somewhere written down. Um, let's have a look. Um, Everise is Parker and Martel. Okay. Yeah, not Grey. I don't know why I'm thinking Grey. They're, so they're just Martel, jobbers. Um, basically, for the moment, yeah, I think that's what, what okay. they are. And we were talking about how Lorcan won. He did the single craps mission, and they did the taunt to Imperium. So I think you're right. We'll probably yes. see that. But in my opinion, they'll probably do. Listen, here's what I think. If Birch and Lorcan can have a good match, mm-hmm. it will be against Imperium. Yeah. So I'm going to wait and see how that turns out and then give you my final judgment on Lorcan and Birch. They right, okay. they were pretty good at the takeover pay per view where they were the ladder match, but yeah. that's hard to really tell because everyone's good. So we'll see yeah. what I think of them after that match. So then we cool. see um, uh, there is a tw- T and Ox and Kota Kai are tweeting. Um, yeah. Keith Lee is backstage and he says that he he makes fun of the Garganos for filming the recent dinner. And um, he says that he has a problem with it, that 
He has a problem with her actions tonight, and he believes that these problems will come to a head at TakeOver. So, somebody is going to be fighting Keith Lee at TakeOver. Yes. So, that will be Which, interesting. Yes. Just yes. Let's do that. Then we see Matt Riddle. He's talking about Timothy Thatcher. He says, um, He's Thatcher. A puss. Yeah, exactly. He's not a stallion. He's a puss. <laughs> um, and he just says, They're going to fight where we're both familiar, the cage. And okay. next week it's going to be that match. So I'll be looking forward to that one. Then after that, yes. we saw Kushida against Drake Maverick. I'm sorry, Drake Maverick can suck a lemon. I don't care. <gasps> I'm How sorry. Dare you? I am so sorry, but How I just. Dare you? I just. Wow. National you, treasure. You were so Maverick. shook by that. Wow. He must be serious over there. <laughs> no, I just. For me, I just. <laughs> I. Uh, uh, like, they. 24 7 champion, then his wife. Then I get fired. I'm going to cry about it. And then I'm going to lose. And then I'm going to win. Like, it's just like, what are you doing with him? I, mean, I don't understand. You're really going at him for crying about losing his job. That was like, oh. For oh. real. Because it's like, no. I don't know if it's real or not. Did he really get fired? And if he did, that's kind of, if he did, that's kind of messed up to the people who really did get fired, you know? Yeah, I, I think I think he did get fired, but I think he might just be, he, they've either like made it into a furlough or they've decided, oh, so many people are behind this guy. We're going to take him back and have him get this redemption story kind of oh, it's right. like yeah because it's like the whole daniel bryan bryan thing like his kind of uh organic rise to the top and winning the championship in 2014 like i think it's kind of like that for maverick see i what's funny with that well go ahead finish your sentence and i'll tell you what i think go ahead mm -hmm. wait sorry no go ahead finish your sentence um, yeah, so what I'm saying is basically, because if there was a crowd in that arena, they would be going wild for Drake Maverick. Like, mm. everyone loves Maverick now, and it's like, I, me included, I, I want him, either him or Kushida, I want to win. Okay. So, so for me, I think I'm kind of like a person that comes late to the party. So when Daniel yeah. Bryan was on top, I didn't like him. When everyone was going, yes, yes, I was literally saying no, I did not like him. Um, and oh my I, God. I was like super, I was like, oh, why is he, you know, he sucks, da, da, da. And to be honest, like, I didn't understand the nature or severity of his injuries because I okay. always saw people like Triple H, Stone Cold, they would get hurt and work through their injuries and then still compete. For me, I didn't understand why Daniel Bryan couldn't until I learned okay. that it wasn't that he didn't want to. He was being told he couldn't. And then, yeah, it's like with Edge. Yes. And then when SmackDown, when he became the general manager of SmackDown, I started to like him. I think for mm. me, I don't like it when everyone likes someone. I kind of like yeah. it better afterwards because I just think like it's easy for everyone to be like, yes, yes. But like you're saying yes to what? Like You're literally just saying yes because he's cool. I want to have a reason yeah. to root for you. So I like. Because, Go ahead. Whoa, 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 wait, wait. The reason to root for Daniel Bryan was because, like, firstly, everyone wanted him at the top because basically he was he was in the Indies as well, and he was like this massive indie darling that mm -hmm. made it to WWE. And let's be honest, who really wanted Batista versus Randy Orton? Who really wanted that as a main event? Oh, nobody. No, no, no. Exactly. So. When you have this guy like Daniel Bryan who's like uber talented and like has worked so hard to get where he was and he's just been screwed time and time again, it was amazing to have him make it his way to the top and so organically as well. Like, because he wasn't the plan. He wasn't yeah. the plan, but th that's one of the occasions where Vince listened to the fans and was like, oh, this guy's money. But here's the only thing though, Alan. Remember, he won the title and then he got hurt in April. Yes. Which was on, obviously tragic. But yeah. Then again, what can you really do about yeah. that? Yeah. Like it was. It's not exactly his fault. Yeah. I just think that, like, I don't know. I think for me, I'm more of like an old school fight through it. Don't cry about it. 
Like, I understand, like, he was being told, no, I totally get that. But, like, maybe it's just because I didn't really focus a lot on his matches. I really didn't think he did it for me. I felt like he... Because you got to remember, too, when I was watching it, right before everyone loved him, he was a bad guy. So, I was like, oh, Daniel Bryan, AJ Lee, Kane, Corny. Why is everyone in love with Daniel Bryan all of a sudden? Sorry, you're kind of cutting out for me. Sorry. No, like, so for me, like... When it started happening, I remember seeing him, like, before he turned good. He was with AJ Lee, and he was, like, a dickwad, and Kane, and CM Punk. And then when they started cheering, I was like, what is it that they see in this guy? Because I didn't, I didn't, I just saw him be bad. So I was like, what is it that they, but re-watching it, like, now, I'm like, whoa, he did do a lot for that time. And he did do a lot. And it took me a while to get to that. So I think with Drake, I might get there. But right now, I'm just like, eh. You know, like, I You're just... You're a little late to the party. Exactly. Late. Yes. I'm always late to the party. But I still go, but I'm late. <laughs> but I do, like, I do, you know, I do, I'm do. i just very much, like, root for someone who's not everyone's rooting for. Like, I don't want to root for everyone just because. Like, Daniel Bryan was doing good things, but... Any time he'd come out, yes, yes, yes. yes. Like, he, if he said, kiss my ass, they'd be chanting, yes. That was my only problem, was that oh, they, yeah, like, worshipped him. Ah. I remember, and this is something, and this might be another reason why I don't like him. So I, re <laughs> I remember going, <laughs> and um, it was, I think it was SmackDown. It was Daniel Bryan against Kane. And this is when I say fans are really into him. So my fiance and we really didn't like him too much. And so we were, you know, chanting no. The dude behind my fiance literally was right at her head chanting, yes, yes, yes. And I snapped. And I'm just like, you people make people not like him. You're getting that upset because someone's not a fan. One person in an arena of at least 1,200 is not a fan and you're mad. So that's just why, like, I kind of didn't read, because it's almost like, if you don't like Daniel Bryan, you're a loser. You need a war. It's like, Daniel Bryan did what? Like, I'm sorry. Like, he did. He was good, but, like, uh, Ed, Shawn Michaels is good. He, like, there's so many good people. What did he do? You know, like, he made, you know, he did do a lot. Like, he made a lot of smaller people look like they could be in a main event spot. But for me, in general, I've always liked the smaller wrestlers. I've always thought that they were better in the main event. I just think that sometimes the fans yeah. kind of drove me to dislike them. They're, they're, you don't need to be so obsessed. It's okay. I get that, yeah. And I was like, dude, like, back up. Like, I'm about to throw you off this, this thing. Like, it's okay to, 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 to disagree. And that's why, like, I stayed away from going to shows for a bit because it was getting very, very toxic. If you did not like Daniel Bryan, you were in trouble. This happened, like, twice. And so yeah. then I went to NXT and I was like, this is what wrestling crowds are really like. You go, you champ for who you want to champ for, you get excited. I had not had that much fun in a wrestling show since I was like little. So, but yeah, I do love. I love the... Sorry, I love no, no, the NXT fans um, are like guys who were into the indies and they're like oh NXT all the indie guys are there now yes so they go there and it's like because indie crowds are the best crowds mm -hmm. yeah I totally felt like I literally when I remember I remember being little and I used to love going I went all the time and I remember feeling a part of the crowd you were like a part of a family kind of because you're all rooting and you're all in it and I felt so yeah. different when I went in 2014 2015 when I went back, I was like, I'm back in the family. All right. You know, like, I was happy, but... <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. But, um, yeah, I... We'll see. But, like, Drake Maverick, like, you know, he's not the worst, but, you know, he's just kind of there. In my opinion, at least. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I get what you mean. So, he won, and he's going to be moving on up. To the tr oh, it's actually next week. You're right. So it's gonna be um, it's gonna be Drake Maverick versus Kushida versus the guy's last name was Atlas. So yeah. um, let's see what's Jake next. Atlas. And then Damian Priest comes and he talks about how he's not coming for Balor on just any stage. He's coming for him at Takeover, and he says that yeah. he will. 
The name Finn Balor will turn to Ash, while the name Damian Priest will live forever. Dun, 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 dun. He's good. I like him. <laughs> I, I, I like him. I think he's, like, really charismatic. with Because with a lot of big guys, like, it, especially on the main roster, you don't have that charisma. But then you have um, guys like Keith Lee and Damian Priest who are, like, really charismatic. And they have, like, the size. Like, they're, they're Vince McMahon guys, yep. basically. Yep, yep. And they're just amazing. And I gotta tell you, I... There's some wrestlers that I love, but give me NXT all day, I would yeah. watch that over WWE anytime. Yeah, like, absolutely. So I think it's like slave for AEW to watch shit on NXT because it's like their product is like the best thing going. So, yeah. anyways, okay. So our next match was Rhea Ripley against Io Shirai. Um, I'm not gonna lie, coming into this match, I knew that we were going to lead to a triple threat because both Io and Rio are both amazing. I can't pick one. So yeah. why not have them both? So. Oh, Io, Io is amazing. Yeah. Um, but Rio, I'm she does nothing for me. I'm not a big fan. Oh, you don't like Rio, really? No. Oh. Like, uh, what no, is it like that you don't she like? She doesn't do it for me. She's just... Well, in the ring, she's really nothing special. So, okay. like, and, like, she had, like, a thing. Like, she had a bit of a scandal. Like, I think it was in the middle of last year or something. I don't know. But it just left kind of a sour taste in my what mouth. What happened? What'd she do? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I want to know the um, gossip. I don't even remember. I think she said she said a slur on oh. the live stream. And I was like, oh, that leaves a sour taste in my mouth. Was you it, know? like, a racist slur or... Um, I think she called someone the F word. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Which, okay. Okay, like, okay. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it just rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So she's like a piece um, of shit. Also, no, um, no, I wouldn't say that. It's just, some, <laughs> it's just something that rubbed me the wrong way. And like, I never really liked her anyway, like, to be honest, because she kind of, when she came in at the May Young Classic, like, um... She would kind of like just had this generic look, and like I, I just feel like she couldn't rely on her ring skills enough, so she had to change up her whole look just to get noticed on a roster full of good women, mm. women like women who are good at wrestling. This like, is just, my like, brutality. Sorry. Yeah, like she had to do this whole punk metal thing just to get noticed, and it was like, eh, I don't really like you that much. Okay, okay. Well, you like Eo though, right? Eo. Love you. She's really good. She's one of my favorites. I love her. She's great. I just think she's such a good heel, and she's just mm. amazing. That's the thing. She makes a great heel, but she also makes a great baby face. Yes. Like, she can do both. Mm -hmm. I remember I was so... First of all, her theme music for both heel and face are amazing. Um, right. And I, and I remember when she came out as a good guy for TakeOver 25. And I was like, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, yo. I yeah. still, I love her. She, all of the Asian athletes are fucking amazing, in my opinion. Kyrie Sane, Asuka. Yeah, yeah. My God, they just... You got Shinsuke. Yes. But even like, him, I'm yeah. sorry, I love Shinsuke. He has done nothing since 2017, too. I mean, I don't understand. That's true. IC championship until recently. Yeah, but that's something else we should talk about really quick. I'm glad that you brought it up. How prestigious is that title anymore? Um, oh. It's, <laughs> it's kind of just gotten, it's kind of just gotten lost in the shuffle. It's like everything it's, irrelevant. Mm, like, I feel like everything on SmackDown just dies. Yeah, it's just like there's oh, nothing no, there. Matt Riddle. No. Yeah, he's going to SmackDown. I, uh, no. I don't. Oh, I, I hope he. Oh God. Why are they bringing him up? I don't understand. Like, I don't. I don't know. Like I you think have. They shouldn't. Well, I don't get with them is this. You have had undisputed era, who I love. They have been doing this mm -hmm. since 2017. Why haven't mm -hmm. they been brought up? Because they're a good staple for it, NXT, right? Well, what it about would him? Ruin them. Exactly, but then what about Matt Riddle? They don't care about their wrestlers the same, and that's not fair either. Mm. 
because Matt Riddle is a staple on NXT. So is yeah. Undisputed Era. Think of NXT without Undisputed Era. It's hard to think about that because they've been around for so yeah, long. Yeah, definitely. But you're willing to keep them here. But let me bring up Matt Riddle, who's a fan favorite, who's currently in a storyline with someone. Let me bring him up to SmackDown and have him yeah. just... Like, I don't get it. Even the Forgotten Sons, I'm sorry, they're good, but why would you call them up? Like, I'm glad because it's like, at least it's, you know, no one good. But, like, I don't I don't get their ideas. Even, like, look, Austin Theory. I don't know much about him. I, I don't know if he's in the news or not. He's good, but, like, you call him. Like, who is, who are these irrelevant people that you're calling up? And then you've got Bianca Belair. She comes up and she's on main event. Yeah. Yep. Like, what are you doing? Like, are you part of the Forgotten Sons in, in like, get them right for a champ, uh, champ, yeah. championship opportunity? Then you have Bianca Belair and you put her on main event? Yeah. Like, stop. Stop. Yeah. Put her on Superstar. I'm not, sorry, SmackDown, if you're going to do anything. Let her fight for the women's title. Yeah. Definitely. SmackDown is so Smackdown stale. Is just not it. Dana Brooke. Yeah. Like, who cares? Dana Botch, come on. Keep it moving. <laughs> I don't get it, but sorry, another TNJ. So, NXT uh, ended with Rhea and Shirai, where basically they were fighting, and then Charlotte Flair ran in and hit Shirai with a big boot. Um, she yes. speared Ripley, and then she stood tall with the title. Um, we found out it's going to be a triple threat. What are you thinking? I don't like, like, I don't think she's amazing in the ring, but she's a decent wrestler. And then you have Io and Charlotte, who are both very good wrestlers. They're very talented. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be entertaining, at least. Yeah, I think they're going to they're gonna go at it all. And as we figure out more matches to in your house takeover, we'll be covering all of that good stuff. But that is it. For our recap in NXT. Nothing really has been going on in WWE. Um, they're still kind of like planting seeds for backlash. We know Asuka is going to fight Nia Jax. We know Randy Orton is going to fight Edge, which would be amazing. Drew McIntyre is going to fight Bobby Lashley. So, uh, I don't know how excited I am for backlash, but I might watch it. But yeah, so we are all set. Thank you for tuning in. And we will be back soon with another video shortly. See you all soon. Take care, everybody.